close your eyes. Focus on the breath. Notice where you feel the breathing. Might start off with a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths to emphasize where in the body you sense the breathing process. And then ask yourself, is it comfortable? If it feels too long, too heavy, too whatever, you can change. Adjust it a bit to see if shorter breathing might feel good, more gentle breathing might feel better, or heavier breathing, even deeper or more shallow. Lots of different ways you can adjust your breathing. Or you can just pose a question in the mind, what kind of breathing would feel good right now, each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out, and see how the body responds. Think of the breath as a whole body process. It's not just air coming in and out of the lungs, it's the movement of energy throughout the body, throughout the nerves, throughout the blood vessels. We're up to three levels of the breath. One is the in and out breath, the air coming in and out of the lungs. And then there's the more subtle breath, the flow of energy that starts as soon as you breathe in. It's already gone all the way through the body. moves through the blood vessels, moves through the nerves. And you might want to check, make a survey of the body to make sure that all those channels are open. Down the back, out the legs, in the front of the body, right down the middle, past the shoulders, down the arms all around the head, down the legs, all the way to the feet. If there are any patterns of tension or tightness, allow them to relax so that the energy can flow easily. And there's another level of breath energy. It's the still breath. It's an energy, but it's not moving. And John Lee talks about being able to access it right at the spot where the diaphragm meets the front of the rib cage. But there are lots of other spots in the body, too, where you may notice that things are just very still. And if you want, you can focus on those still points, and then think of that stillness spreading throughout all the, the breath channels in the body. But for that to work, you have, first have to go through the, the second level of breathing, where you're working through the patterns of tension, combing them out separating them out, loosening them up, so that when you focus on the stillness, everything is open. And when you think of spreading it, it all the channels are open, and everything go all the way out to the edge of the body. And if you can maintain that sense of stillness, fine. It's like tuning into different radio stations. All those different frequencies are going through the air right now. It's simply a matter of where you tune the radio, which level you're going to focus on. Because the blatant breath is here, the more subtle breath is here, and the still breath is here. They're all here. It's simply a matter of focusing the level of your awareness, focusing the level of your sensitivity, so you can pick up on which level is appropriate. If the more subtle ones are hard to focus on, stay with the blatant breath.
But if you can manage the more subtle ones, it's a good part of your repertoire. See which ones you can stay with most consistently that allow the mind to have a sense of real stability. And clear focus. If some of the subtle levels are too vague for you, you're going to lose your focus and you find the mind drifting off. So choose a level of breath on which it's appropriate for you right now. And as for the other levels, you can leave them for later. This is a common pattern throughout the Buddhist teachings. He talks about right view. There are many levels of right view, and they're all true. The Buddha never taught convenient fictions. But his levels of right view are there for you to choose as to which is appropriate for you for the task you have. It's like the truths of the different sciences. They're the truths of physics, and they're the truths of geology, and the truths of biology. And they're operating on different levels. There is a connection. But the question is, which do you need right now? for whatever particular purpose you have. And it's the same with the levels of right view. There's the level of what's called mundane right view. You basically accept the principle of action, that your actions have consequences, not only in this life, but on into other lives. And those consequences are determined by the quality of mind you bring to the action, the quality of your intention. This level of right view is good for when you want to learn about what's skillful and what's unskillful in your day-to-day -day actions, and even what's skillful and unskillful in learning to get the mind to settle down. After all, meditation is a kind of karma. It's a kind of action. So you want to do it skillfully. It's on this level the Buddha talks about beings and worlds. And most of our common everyday concepts. And it's a very useful level to have. But he also has other levels of right view. There's the level of the Four Noble Truths, where he doesn't talk about beings or worlds. It simply analyzes the problem of suffering. And this is for use when you get when your powers of concentration get better. You start analyzing things simply in terms of the fact that there's stress and what's causing the stress, what mental movements are causing the stress, and what to do so that you can see those mental movements and see the stress, and learn how to put an end to the stress by putting an end to the cause or the causes. And the Buddha divides things up into four categories like this because there are different duties for each category. For stress, it's something you want to comprehend. You want to be able to look at it and watch it so you can understand how it comes, how it goes. What are the things that you like that involve stress? And what are the drawbacks of liking those things? The Buddha talks about come in everyday stress, and then he moves on to a, an underlying analysis, which he calls the five clinging aggregates. Form, feeling, perception, fabrications, consciousness, all these things are things that we cling to. And in the clinging, there's going to be stress. That's something you want to comprehend. You want to watch as it's actually happening to understand how it's happening. And in that duty or performing that duty, you learn to see the, the cause of stress, what's arising together with the stress. And the duty there is to abandon it. Once you see that this particular mental action, this type of perception, this type of attitude, this particular kind of desire is bringing stress with it, you learn how to drop it. Again, you have to see why you like it to begin with. but then also balance it out with its its drawbacks so you can develop a sense of dispassion. 
Now that dispassion is actually the third noble truth. And the duty there is to realize it, to see it clearly, to witness it as it's, hap as it's happening. And then the fourth noble truth is the path. And the duty here is to develop it, all the qualities you need like, in terms of virtue, concentration, discernment. You don't just watch these things arise and pass away. You, you actively try to give rise to them, and you actively try to maintain them and develop them. So these four truths are another level of truth. As the Buddha said, these are not other than what they seem. And we may misread them for a while, but when you actually see them happening, that's stress really is stress. The cause really is the cause, and so on down the line. And then there's a third level of right view. And John Munn says it's the level where all four truths become one. And the Buddha refers to it not by name. Well, he does refer to it by name of the right view of just seeing everything arising simply as stress. Stress arising, stress passing away, with just one category. And that's because at that point you have only one duty left, and that's to comprehend it to the point of dispassion. That's putting the, the duty of comprehension and the dispassion and the abandoning all together into one. Because at this point you've developed the path all the way. There's no more developing that has to be done. This too is a level of right view, and this too is a truth, appropriate at a very refined level of the practice. And then there's the truth of Nibbana which is something that's beyond the four truths, beyond even that one truth of stress arising, stress passing away. Now in Nibbana itself there are no right views. As John Lee says, there's no, Nibbana has no use for right views or wrong views. It doesn't need them at that point. It's the goal. It's not the path. And so the Buddha offers us many levels of right view as are appropriate for what we need to do. It's as if you're digging a well. You wouldn't go to an astrophysicist, the astrophysicist could tell you all kinds of truths about things, but that's not what you want. You'd want a geologist. They could tell you where to look for water. And even the truth of astrophysics or the truth of physics would it be applicable to why there is water there. That's not the level you need right now. You're looking for water. You want to dig a well. So you go to the geologist. And it's the same with these levels of truths. Whatever duty is appropriate for what you need to do right now, that's the level of right view you want to focus on. The Buddha didn't have any secret truths. As he said toward the end of his life, he was not a close-fisted teacher. He wasn't going to keep anything for the very end, and he wasn't going to have secret teachings just for the inner circle. But there are levels of teachings. They're all out there and available, and it's up to you to decide which is appropriate for you right now. And the same as when you're focusing on the breath. What level of breath is it easiest for you to stay focused on? You stay with that level. As your powers of concentration develop, your mindfulness gets stronger, then you can start working with the more subtle levels. They're all true, but the question is which one is good for you right now, i.e. which one is beneficial and which one is timely. This principle the Buddha applied for right speech, that it be true, beneficial, and timely applies to a lot of other aspects of the practice as well. So focus on whichever level is best for you right now, and allow that to develop. The 
This is how we take the Buddha's teachings, which are always available. You could look up any of his teachings at any time. But you learn how to make them timely for yourself. By focusing on the teaching that's most appropriate for you right now. That right there requires some discernment, but it's an exercise in discernment. That's how your discernment grows.